Hi there, Jake from Drone Tech. Today we're going to be discussing the Osmo by DJI. It's a handheld camcorder with a gimbal that stabilizes the image. It shoots in 4K, and today we're going to be going over the settings inside of the camera along with the settings of the DJI Go application. So, let's get started. So starting in the upper left hand corner of the screen, you'll see a toggle switch between photo and video. Now the photo setting is shot in 4x3 format and the video setting is in 16x9. Now we set it up that way on purpose. On the bottom right hand corner you can see the gear. We'll get to that setting in a second. Moving on down, you'll see two video settings. One is the normal speed video and the next is going to be slow motion. Toggling back to the photo area, you'll see a lot of different options for taking photographs. We're going to go through each one of these in detail in a little bit. The next section to talk about are the exposure settings. Right now it's set to auto, but you do have the option to choose shutter priority or fully manual. With fully manual, you can control the shutter speed and the ISO. Now the Osmo has a fixed 2.8 f-stop and uh, is not adjustable. So the options that we have are shutter speed and or ISO. Um, we can also add neutral density filters to get to the desired shutter speed. We'll talk about this in another video. When the video becomes overexposed, there is an option to turn on zebra stripes. We'll show you that in the settings menu in a minute. You are able to play back your images and videos by clicking the play button in the bottom left hand corner. In addition, you can press the home button in the upper right hand corner and get back to the entry screen when you first connect the app. The next icon down is an image of the camera and uh, there are two options in here. The first one is an arrow pointing up and when you click that, it resets the gimbal to the forward position and allows you to see directly in front of the Osmo again. So in this example here, uh, I am facing it towards myself and when I push the button, it snaps around. The next icon is a lock, and when you push it, it'll lock the gimbal in the direction that it's facing while you're moving the handle around. This is really great if you're trying to stay focused on a single object or in a specific direction. You can also lock the gimbal by pressing and holding the trigger button in the front. When you do that, the camera will lock and stay in the direction that it was originally pointing. Let's go in and look at the camera settings now. In here, you'll see that the video resolution selector is set to 1080p at 60 frames a second. Now this will go up to 4K at 30 frames a second. You can choose MOV or MP4. Now for us, we use Mac mostly to edit our video, so MOV is fine. Uh, if you're using PC, maybe MP4 is better. Um, really, the, the quality is exactly the same. It uses the same codecs between MOV and MP4. Um, you can choose whether to record audio or not and uh, set whether you want NTSC or PAL, and that'll be determined by the area or region that you're in. So in the North America where we are, NTSC is what we need. Moving on to the photo section, you can choose the four by three ratio or the 16 by nine. As I mentioned earlier, we always shoot in four by three and you can crop it later. Uh, by switching it to 16 nine, you're, you're forcing the image to be cropped in the camera and uh, really you're just losing data. Uh, there are a few image format options. You can shoot everything in JPEG, uh, everything in RAW, or you can have both. Um, typically, we shoot everything in JPEG and RAW. It allows us to uh, view the JPEGs really quickly and easily, and then pull the, the image that we want into Photoshop and edit the RAW image. So for the time-lapse format, there are two options here which are really nice. One is the video that is completely stitched together and, and, and done, and the other is the video and the JPEGs. And when you choose that option, it allows you to pull those images into something like Lightroom, do some minor editing to them, and then convert them into a time lapse. In the general settings area, you have the overexposure warning, which is the zebra stripes that you saw earlier when uh, the image was grossly overexposed. Uh, the next option is grid, and they do give you a few options here. We usually choose grid and diagonals, makes for composing the image a little easier. And we have the histograms on usually so that we can see what our exposure looks like right on screen. 
So let's take this Osmo for a test drive. Uh, we're going to do some video and photos and uh, see how it works. So the first thing we're going to do is take a video and uh, we're going to press the record button and uh, start walking around. And uh, once we do that, we'll see how the gimbal compensates for the uh, movement um, of my feet and, and bumping around and whatnot. So let's move into the photo section now. And uh, there are a lot of options here, but we're gonna start by taking a single photograph, see what that looks like. You have the option of a five second and a 10 second delay timer, along with an HDR image. HDR image is going to take a couple bracketed exposures and it's going to combine them into one image. Under the multiple section, the Osmo allows you to take bursts of photos, either three, five, or seven images at a time. In addition, it'll also allow you to bracket your images with three or five images. The Panorama was really easy to use. I simply pressed a button and it took a series of photographs, stitched them together, and produced this image. The Osmo created really easy time-lapse photos as well. I uh, turned the camera holder sideways, used it as a tripod, put it on the table, and uh, did five minutes worth of exposures. We, we took one photograph every second, uh, and the Osmo stitched them all together and created a time-lapse. Our overall first impressions of the Osmo is that it takes really great photo and videos. It has a lot of functionality built into it, allows for the panoramas and the time lapse, all the bracketing and the burst photographs, which are great. Uh, it gives you raw options in JPEG. We found that it has about a one hour battery life. Now, a lot of this shoot actually was not recording and we still had about an hour battery life. So we didn't see much of a difference between recording and not recording. Seems to be that that gimbal movement is really what's eaten up the battery. So um, a couple things to add to the wish list for the Osmo. One would be the ability to use f-stops. Uh, to change that aperture. Now I know it's a limitation of the X3 camera, but that would be nice. Um, another would be color options. Uh, really, there aren't any right now. Uh, we, we don't have any control over the saturation or the contrast. Um, it would be nice to be able to put this in something like D-Log, something that is very low contrast, low saturation, and then pull the colors in in post. So I hope this video was useful. If it was, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe.